Nirupana 13, Thursday, March 2nd, 1978. Observe your present life. How and why has it become like this? Know that this is a temporary show. You call upon God, but where was God before you came to know? You are. Find the source of all of this. That which is of the nature of time is not everlasting because time itself is not real. Your intellect also changes with time. The manifest is bound by time. Gods and deities are the result of the power of the word. We are alive by the virtue of the word. The pulse itself is the word. Whatever you believe in is true for you. However, it is time-bound and not eternal. The truth is unmanifested. Maharaj is saying that the manifestation is a time-bound concept. Our body-mind is part of it. The first word, Om, is the symbol of manifestation. Meditate on that by which you know you are. Birth and death are nonsense. Who is born? It is only a sport of the five elements. The vital force is playing as it pleases by collecting and mixing the five elements in the form of a body. They have no intelligence. Why would a merciful God create a world like this, where life depends on life? That is why there is no creator. The world is there due to duality. No duality, no world. People who want to make money should do just that. Search for spiritual knowledge and pursuit of wealth cannot be done at the same time. Spirituality is possible only when you let go of everything. As long as you take yourself as the body, what you say is true for you. It is as true as the body. All activities take place because of the rise of consciousness in the body. The feeling of misery and happiness is there due to the sense I am. Sleep and awakening come spontaneously. They are not a result of your will. The nature of the dream continues through wakefulness. Where is the profit or loss? If there is no individual thought like, I am so and so, have you thought of how this sense of I am is created and how long it will last? Such knowledge should be discussed only with people who have a sense of detachment. Why are people interested in miracles? Is not the greatest miracle your own beingness? Because of that, the immense world is created in an instant. One may get spiritual powers by performing special practices. The knowledge of the self has nothing to do with it. As consciousness, you are prior to space. Before going to sleep, at least say, I am of the nature of space. This knowledge is beyond words. It cannot be acquired through austerities or japa. Sri Krishna taught it out of love. Most people get involved in rituals and various methods of search. As a result, they may get visions and feel satisfied. Self-knowledge is beyond concepts. It is beyond words. It is eternal. Why and from where? Have the experiences of the world and of our own self come over us? How were we prior to this experience? This has to be understood. Keep listening until you have no doubt about your identity as to what you are and how you have come into existence. Faith in the Guru and devotion to the Guru spontaneously brings the understanding. The knowledge once acquired can never be lost. 
one who knows samadhi does not get involved in mundane dealings. Without faith in the guru, there is no hope for such knowledge. Krishna taught the ultimate knowledge, how the universe appears and disappears while the unmanifest remains. This knowledge is not affected by words. When the manifest withdraws into the unmanifest, samadhi ensues. One wants meaning to the words, but this knowledge is beyond words. How the wordless state is has to be explained in words. All doubts have to be eradicated. Worldly knowledge is of no use. When listened to, this knowledge grows by itself, becomes all-pervading, and in the end, merges into the Absolute. It is pleased with the devotion to the Guru and the love for the Guru. The listener should be of a pure heart. You get happiness only when you forget yourself. All other activities are entertainment. The love for the Guru is not an ordinary thing. One who goes on repeating the mantra will realize the truth. Always remember that our consciousness is in accordance with the Guru's word. Keep this firmly in mind. That is meditation. When the meaning of the Guru word sprouts in a person, he goes beyond everything. He understands how the temporary consciousness merges into the eternal state of his nature. Absolute. Your body is the food for your consciousness. It is because of the food that you feel you are. With faith in the Guru's words, all will be explained. Simple devotees will get liberated sooner than the intellectuals. If there is fear of death at the last moment, such a devotee calls upon God, forgets himself, and gets dissolved into the universal consciousness. Prana leaves, and then there is no rebirth. The intellectual devotee becomes involved in concepts and is born again according to his last concept. Nirupana 14 Sunday, March 5th, 1978 A teacher instructs according to his own concepts. People accept that and become his followers. This is the way various creeds come about. However, the situation is quite different. How can that which has no beginning and no end be conceptualized? Nevertheless, people keep on doing some practices and rituals according to their own concepts. People have to do this as they cannot keep quiet. Sai Baba Ashirdi was an exception. He was always immersed in the Absolute. He had no concepts. He never gave initiation. He had no disciples. So there was no creed around him. During this act of the body and prana, the experience of a concept is there in one form or the other. Most people are tied to the body. A rare one recognizes the body depends upon consciousness. It is because of the nature of time that a person says, I am the body, and takes on the doership followed by miseries and happiness. To think I am like this or like that, is external knowledge. To see one's true nature is direct internal knowledge. The ignorance, consciousness, arises and shines, but it is not permanent. It is not steady because of wakefulness and sleep. So long as one is aware of being awake, there is no lasting peace. Dismiss everything that is not you. Here, no action is required. In the Gita, Arjuna, after getting enlightenment, said to Krishna, So long as this consciousness lasts, I shall follow your advice. I shall do what you say. His samadhi was not broken even while fighting the enemy. His peace remained unadulterated. You will not know this until you achieve self-realization. When you understand it, 
there will be no need to know anything else. Krishna said, Your consciousness through all the five senses is protecting you. It is my own manifestation. Accept consciousness as the guru and worship it. It sustains all the bodies. It has no form of its own. It is self-luminous. It has come over you uninvited. The bliss from this consciousness has no match in material happiness. It gives sustenance to innumerable beings. It is pleased with love. It is a devotee of love. The flavor of your beingness is the love. The sense I am is the love. Remember its worthiness. The scriptures describe its greatness. It dwells in your heart. It will offer you enlightenment, perfection, and you will be bliss yourself. Without it, the tongue does not know taste. When this tiny consciousness leaves, People say the person is dead. That which is self-sensing, which is your own beingness, is within you. It is blissful. It is inside you. Without it, there cannot be any witnessing. It is the holy feet of the Sri Guru. It is the life force. It has the flavor of self-love. Your true state precedes the five elements, the sun and the moon. Scriptures never get tired of praising it. It is microscopic. It nourishes and protects the body. Take refuge at its feet, as it is your own true nature. This is the Guru's word. It is through this that you will be liberated. After getting liberation, you may behave in any way you like. When talking to ignorant people, do not contradict them. Do not react. What they believe according to their understanding is correct. Nirupana 15 Thursday, March 9th, 1978 it is true that the association of a sage is beneficial, but one should be prepared internally. One should have inner worthiness. The concept of sin and virtue has importance so long as you consider yourself as the body. The effects depend upon your idea about them. What is said at a certain time is true at that time. It ends when that time has gone. The light of your beingness is of the nature of space. Is space seen in sleep? In deep sleep there is no consciousness, hence there is no space. Your consciousness, I am, is directly within you. You have a great need of your beingness. You take care of yourself so as to preserve it. The reason is that you know you are going to die one day. That which is everlasting need not be taken care of. Are you watching your beingness without making any effort? It is true that previously you were not known to yourself, but now you know you are. You are the witness of this knowingness. One who witnesses it must be prior to it. You will not understand all these things you have heard unless you have worthiness. For this you have to practice meditation. The Sadguru introduces you to meditation and consciousness. First, what was not, now is. Who knows that it was not there? Similarly, who knows that it is there? Those who say that one will need many births to be liberated base it upon hearsay. Only an ignorant person keeps traditional faith. Will the Nyani do so? You must see what is correct directly. Keep quiet until you are not aware of your silence. When someone claims that he is liberated, it should be understood that he was liberated in a dream. Liberation means there is no duality. Then how can one say he is liberated?
Why did you get up from deep sleep? Why did you see a dream while asleep? Do you have any answer for these questions? The wakefulness that came has brought the world. No waking up means no world. The dream is untrue. Similarly, the wakefulness is false. There is no difference between them. They happen spontaneously. Our talk is also happening in a dream. You know that you are. What is the reason for this? Deliberate on this. You must practice japa, meditation, and listening. With sharp intellect, one gets liberated in a short period of time just by listening. The daily behavior is the result of your impressions. First, think through these things and then remain in a thoughtless state. Do not become a slave of your own thoughts. One who has reached the stage where there is no thought will not have to do anything for his sustenance, for his protection. Whatever experience there is in the world, there is no doer. Everything happens spontaneously. Space is everywhere, but consciousness is prior to space. The light of consciousness is space. You will experience its vastness when your body consciousness goes. I am is the root thought. Without that basic feeling, what can we take ourselves as? What are we in deep sleep or in a trance? When there is no feeling of I am, it is called the unmanifest. All worldly dealings of an entire lifetime are based upon the concept I am. However, it has no real existence. This concept is not born of the body. Even if you have no concept that you are, you still are. Consciousness is subtle, luminous, and self-sensing. It is subtler than space. You will know all this when you become of the nature of consciousness. You accept the body as your uniform, but you are not the body. Yoga means union. Unless Purusha and Prakriti unite, there is no knowledge of beingness. A yogi is one who achieves this union. By identifying with the body, you will not understand that which has been created in the body out of this union. All things are identified with names which are words. Hence all dealings are based upon these words. The world is not known without words. The word arises out of prana. The basic word has appeared in various forms. The word is also called the mind. It is the result of impressions received by it. Behavior depends upon the mind. Meditate with the conviction that I am not the mind. When the atomic consciousness manifests, the vast world is created. This atom is the subtle consciousness. There is no peace until this atom is realized. You believe you are the gross body because you have not realized the subtle. The vast world arises out of ignorance and subsides in ignorance. It is unreal. When you will really say, I do not know, you will be in a state of Parabrahman. The blessing may good things happen to you has meaning only with reference to the body. From deep sleep the atomic wakefulness has sprouted. Without it there is no world. Both are illusory. It is the root maya. All existence is in words. Hence, go beyond the words. Understand worldly dealings as unreal and then you will not suffer from them. Think over why and how all these things have come into existence.
Nirupana 16, Sunday, March 19th, 1978. I am not the body, I am the self. If you meditate like this, you will become God. This great mantra is the same as pure consciousness. Do not worship it by giving it a form. The idea that you are the body must go. Then the rest will be fine. You say, I forgot to meditate. But the one who says it has not forgotten it. Just as gold is the source of ornaments, similarly the sense I am is the source of all words. When consciousness realizes itself, it is called the grace of the guru. One must be the proof of the guru's words. The initiation with mantra establishes a special relationship with the guru. Hence, you must have faith in the guru. One could die any time. Then how can he neglect the guru's words? Real devotees are illumined by self-knowledge. Their existence is like that of space. When the stage of the seeker evolves, his behavior also changes. Some behave in a peculiar fashion. Some go about naked. Some keep silent. And some become very abusive. As they are self-realized, they do not behave consciously. A self Realized person has no concern with how the body behaves. His conduct is not governed by any rule of law. The flavor of your beingness is the holy presence of God. The concern about the individual self can be compared to a snake bite. Sages do not consider themselves as the body, so they are not bitten. The self is beyond light and darkness. Only the body or the mind gets stained. Bhagavan means light. The light of Bhagavan is a big void of light. Is there a difference between that light and your own light? When you know your consciousness and become a witness, you will understand that the sky is your light. There is nothing beyond the light of God. The natural quality of God is your own consciousness. As soon as consciousness arises, the five elements are created along with the world. Your sight has the same color as that of space. All names are of the incarnations of God. Were there any names prior to that? Bhagavan means the manifested consciousness. That, by which you know you are, is the same as his nature. Embrace it tightly. In everything all around there is God and only God. Does this light see any difference between a man and a woman? All this, one and all, in its totality, is consciousness. That taste or knowledge of self-existence is Bhagavan. To understand this means to see God in every living being. Forget that you are a human being. Your light is the light of Bhagavan. In all that appears, what is the underlying luminous source? It is this light alone. It is present even in the stone, but it is prominently expressed in you. In all things there is only one true quality. It is consciousness. It demonstrates existence. All other knowledge comes about because of knowingness. Paramatman means I, myself, am Atman. He is not a deity. Deities worship him. It is my own self. It is the direct, correct knowledge. It is there before a single word is uttered. The one that rises and the one that sets finds his rest in Paramatman. P. 
people are awed by the knowledge of Paramatman. How can it even be felt when one has no body? The enlightened devotee says, I am not the body. Then who is it that became enlightened? When a person becomes realized, he no longer considers himself a body. Then, who says, I have become realized? In other words, there is no one who has become enlightened. There is neither nor nor known. No one is born. No one dies. Nothing has happened. The experience can be described in many ways, but the experiencer cannot be described. When words are silent, there is no sense in enumerating the divine names. Nirupana 17, Thursday, March 23rd, 1978 Self-knowledge means having a perfect understanding of what exactly we are. The body for which all the care is taken is impermanent and untrue. Whatever can be known is not the knowledge of the self. One who believes that he is going to die is ignorant. He should have the association of sat, that which exists forever, and not that of the body. Sage means our own pure, ever-present, true nature. There is no personality there. The sage is not a person. He is alone. He signifies a state of permanent satsang, holy association. Meanwhile, the course of life keeps changing and its finale is death. What you believe as yourself is not your true companion. It never was and never will be. One who tolerates everything is a sage, jnani. Can he cause pain to others? The actions of the five elements are not his own. Whatever identity you try to create for yourself in order to be happy is going to be left behind. Your intellect changes with age. You take pride in being so-and-so as a body form. You feel you are like this or like that. The feeling I am suffering from this or that is ignorance. Be convinced that you are separate from the senses. Their experience is not your experience. This is the condition of Brahman. Pure consciousness has never had any experience. Mind is the collection of impressions that have been recorded in it since birth. What is in the body is of the nature of the rest of the world. When it considers itself as the body, it becomes different from the world. To be one with the world means to have devotion for all beings, as if they are God. One who thinks he is the body has no tolerance nor patience. Atman means myself. It is ever free. It has no shape. But it has its own light. The sense I am. It is pure consciousness. When one lives in this state, one knows I am not the body. I am the self-luminous consciousness. What is real does not come and go. Only the body falls. Does your body know that you are sitting here? All bodies in the entire universe move about because of the life force. This very life energy is given various names such as God, Ishwara, and Atman, etc. Actually, consciousness has no name. Names are given for everyday dealings in the practical world. Once consciousness leaves the body, it does not recognize the body. That which is limitless has no knowledge of its own. It has no pride such as I am like this or like that. Millions of beings are born in that consciousness every day. The same consciousness abides in all.
your memory functions automatically. It is recorded chemically. Anything which you take doership of remains with you as a memory. Your body is a machine that produces vital energy that has the feeling of I am. It carries out all dealings. Was there any experience to guide you before you started learning about things? This chemical I amness does everything. That knowledge is not affected by the three gunas. When there was no experience of the body, what were you like? Without ignorance, there can be no knowledge. If the basic ignorance of a child is not there, no knowledge can be acquired. Knowledge appears because there is ignorance. With the body, when one knows I am, it is called vruta, knowingness. Paramatman has no such knowledge of a separate existence. This knowledge, information, is called the mind, intellect, beingness, intuition, etc. There is no truth in it. When the meaning of this is grasped, the mind disappears. Did we come first or did the mind, words, come first? Whatever there is, is because of the root word, I. What can that state prior to words be called as? Because words in daily dealings are taken to be true, the word body consciousness has stuck to you. The knower of the self does not consciously experience the knowingness I am. When you become unattached, compassion will flow through you. All undesirable things will vanish. To become unattached means you exist as the absolute. In such company, others also get peace. Such a one knows how the world is created. Ego means identification with the body. When that goes, purposeful behavior also vanishes. The worship of such sages uplifts even the deities. God is indebted to the devotee as he becomes free from his body. To get rid of the body while one is alive is a most difficult task. Consciousness in the body is God. Nirupana 18, Sunday, March 26th, 1978. The feeling I know a lot is ignorance. Once it is understood that this is pure ignorance, it does not matter whether one talks a lot or not at all. When you go to sleep, you are sleep itself. You are not separate from the sleep. On waking up, the knowledge I am dawns upon you and instantly creates the world. When you are asleep, you are pure ignorance. What would happen if one day this ignorance does not wake up? Then who would be there to die? Ignorance sleeps and wakes up every day. What is the meaning of the removal of ignorance? You can take any meaning you like. But what is the real situation? You, who are awake, go to sleep. That means the knowledge itself becomes ignorance. You have to understand the true import of this fact. Here, ignorance implies the absolute, and knowledge implies the sense, I am. When Brahman is liberated, Parabrahman stays as he is. That which is the cause of this itch, happiness and misery, is Brahman. When the itch disappears, it is Parabrahman. What I am, here and now, is awakened ignorance. The base for all things is ignorance that is called sleep. Wakefulness is the child of ignorance. If there is ignorance, only then there can be knowledge. The faith that you are is created in you. It has come uninvited. 
Faith or devotion means love. It is the love for the self. The certitude that you are is the pure and holy manifestation of Paramatman. It is jnana. Recognition of the body comes through this faith in the self. The holy names are for that certitude of the self. Do not worship the impermanent, i.e. the body. The use of this body is to nourish the faith in the self. The fragrance of I am coming through the body is God. One who believes he is the body faces death. You have different kinds of beliefs. You become according to what you believe. How very powerful is the effect of beliefs? Be aware of that fact. Your faith that you are is of the nature of the Guru or God. It is in your heart in the form of light, knowingness. The light of the self never dies. One whose self-light does not die, will he ever die? He may not live in today's form, that is all. The form is illumined by this light. The sense I am is God. It is called Saguna Brahman, the manifest with quality. It is contained in Parabrahman, the absolute without quality. You are Brahman. The great mantra given to you is the expression of Brahman. It is your own nature. You must invoke it by the mantra. It will surely reveal itself. One who wins a big lottery becomes happy. He considers himself a rich man. It took only a moment for this to happen. If this is so, why does not the Guru's mantra bring about such instantaneous change? With faith in the Guru, fear of death vanishes forever. Thereby the fear of birth also vanishes. As you nurse in your heart the faith of your beingness, your conduct will go on changing. The belief that I am a meager human being changes to I am Brahman. Then the work is done. The Guru's word is perfect knowledge. It is the state of being. It is movement as well. Hold on to it tightly. All other means cannot even come close to it. Nirupana 19 Thursday, March 30th, 1978 I am without a body and everything is perceived through my own light. This must be firmly established within. You say you cannot see your own light. How can you see that by which other things are seen? When you meditate, you must keep in mind that the meditator is formless. When you go to sleep, keep the thought that you are not the body. One without the body has no caste, no sin, no virtue, no time. The sky cannot be stained and you are purer than the sky. Ananda bliss is subjective, but the self is not. Unless all things are forgotten, there is no bliss. As you get more faith in yourself, the individual mind will fade and you will be one-pointed. Until a certain stage, the deities are there. When that stage is transcended, the deities are not there. Until a certain stage of meditation, the seeker has powers, i.e. deities. When he goes beyond, there is only Brahman. You do not understand your own personality, so how can others? The scriptures are for the ignorant, not for the one of knowledge. Whatever can be told through words has no permanence. It can be compared to a dream. Break off this deep-rooted habit of identifying with the body. Dwell on this. What do you think of yourself? Your body is food material. 
It is the food of consciousness, the life force within. Consciousness and the world are one and the same. They arise simultaneously. World is an illusion. However, you are the knower of the illusion that is caused by the play of the three gunas. This puzzle will be solved only through discrimination and not by rituals. With that, offer yourself at the feet of the guru. This itself is guru's grace. You ask of what use is Paramatman to you. When Paramatman has no use for himself, how can he have any use for you? Why do we ask about that which has never come into existence? From the point of view of the Nyani, nothing has ever happened. How can one recollect what was never forgotten? Actually, what is remembered will surely be forgotten. After saying this, Guru Ramdas still made people sing the praise of the Lord and made idols of Maruti out of cow dung. Was he a fool? Maya means illusion that has suddenly appeared. It is the illusion of having a shape and form. It has come over you because you have forgotten your true nature. Think of how and when you got your concept of beingness. One who knows the self has no problem with anything good or bad. To have any want is beggarliness. Be still. Gradually you will know what really happens and why. In fact, even when no harm is done, the jiva, feeling that a great calamity has happened, keeps on struggling, eventually to die in vain. In the stage of body consciousness, all are beggars. Each one is asking for something or the other. Until ignorance disappears, the concept, I want to go beyond, will remain. There is only Maha Maya, the grand illusion. She has to be dismissed after first worshipping her as God or Brahman. Then Godhood is also dismissed simultaneously. A rare one will tell you this most secret knowledge. After worshipping the self as God, ignorance will be revealed. Then no knowledge will be left. As spoken in the Vedas, one can go beyond karma after achieving knowledge of Brahman. It is rare to find one who knows correctly and yet does not claim that he has the knowledge. Who is the knower, the jnani? He only knows that all this is ignorance. The union of you having the knowledge of your beingness and you not having the knowledge of your beingness is Maha Yoga, the grand union. One who knows this great yoga has transcended the knowingness of beingness. Self is light. When the jiva emanates light, he sees the world. The reflection of the world appears in your knowingness. If there is an experience of happiness, there will be an experience of sorrow. Remember well what you have heard and put it directly into practice. Nirupana 20, Sunday, April 2nd, 1978 Truly speaking, an individual has no form. The so-called form is made up of the five elements. Inside the body, there are five senses. Which of these are you going to continue to live as? Most people want to hear what is based on the body sense. They do not recognize the body is unreal. All the knowledge in the world is based upon words. Find out if the one who has this wordy knowledge has any form. 
Contemplation on anything which is not the self is untrue. Meditation can only be that of the self. Knowingness that is in the body must be traced. It has no individuality. Sugar melts in the mouth, but its sweetness remains. Does sweetness have any personality? There is only a trace of manifestation there. That is all. No experience is lasting. The experiencer cannot be described through words, and we are the experiencers. That which depends upon life force and consciousness is not lasting. The everlasting is beyond these. We must expose the concept, I am somebody or something. Everything happens according to the nature of time. Desire to attain self-realization also arises according to the dictates of time. When consciousness arises, the world becomes visible. This is the ultimate principle. Childhood is put aside as you grow older. Similarly, after getting correct knowledge, the body form is put aside. As you have to say something through words you call God the doer. Would the all merciful God create such total chaos? Without us, there is no God. God is nothing but the certitude you have of your beingness, the love you have of your beingness. The sense I am is Brahman. The one beyond it is called Parabrahman. First you will become Brahman, and then you and Brahman will disappear. Your subtle consciousness will expand, pervade the whole universe, and then dissolve. This happens in deep meditation. The Niani says ultimately there is nothing. Then why does he teach others? The answer is like this. When one has to go urinate, one has to go urgently. While urinating, does not one temporarily love the act? Similarly, the body of a jnani is a temporary sensation that makes him preach. The primary dream is the feeling that you are. So long as you address God out of duality, you have not reached your destination. Paramatman has neither birth nor death. Then why did Krishna say, I have had many births? All these births were of the five elements. Such births are happening by the millions every second in the Paramatman. The scriptures are concepts of poets. They offer bribes as well as they threaten. During sleep, there is no experience of oneself. Sleep cannot be seen after waking up. In the same way, maya is unimaginable. Just as sleep cannot be known, so maya cannot be known either by gods or by men. Maya appears out of the manifestation of consciousness. Prior to that, there is no maya. The thought of I am is the disturbance. Even greater gods do not understand Maya as they are created by Maya. They are not self-created. Their actions are illusory. The detached one has no touch of Maya. Deep sleep means total ignorance. From that feeling I am arises. That is the beginning of Maya. With the feeling that he is awake, one goes about dealing proudly in the world that does not exist. The feeling, I am awake, creates the world. It is born out of Maya. When you realize this, the feeling that I am the doer will vanish. When you see yourself, it will be seen as an empty void. Emptier than even a dream. The image that 
I am like this or like that has seized you. What has been created will surely be destroyed. What is created? It is our consciousness. When the feeling of I arises, it becomes the ego. You would not be listening to this unless you are worthy. After hearing it, it has to be remembered again and again. That is the beginning of the process. This form has come to you spontaneously. No one created it. You would not be here unless you were inspired from within to get the true meaning of life. This is not the type of devotion whose purpose is to acquire something. The purpose of this devotion is to get liberation through listening. The idea that you are a man or a woman with characteristic behavior patterns is false. It is an appearance. To know this, some worthiness is required. The knowledge I am is your godhood. Understand that. Various names are given to it. The fact that a liking to hear about this knowledge has arisen in you is a good spiritual sign. When the knowledge of your beingness becomes clear, you will transcend Maya. Consciousness will reveal its own worthiness. Manifestation is all one, but the names are many. All the names pertain to Maya. After knowing the fact that I am everywhere, the knower will not be different from the knowledge. No experience is lasting. Whichever way you look at yourself will surely go. The sense that you are awake is also a concept. Sleep and wakefulness are indicators of your transient nature. When you enter into deep sleep, you let go of yourself every day. If that sleep does not end, what are you going to do? With a death arise today or a thousand years from now, it should be the end of it all. There should be no problem. Detachment is the feeling that all this is an appearance. When truth is attained, false things drop off. No special effort is required to let them go. That is called an offering to Brahman. The scriptures say that at the proper time, Bhagavan takes an incarnation and nourishes Dharma. It is the Dharma of one's own true nature. When ordinary people preach Dharma, it is the Dharma of the body. The Guru is an incarnation of God. Due to devotion to the Guru, Maya, which appears demonic and vast, is reduced to the size of an atom. Do not neglect the consciousness that is now listening. It is pure and clean. Keep this in mind and worship the same. Do not forget that self-knowledge is the knowledge of our own beingness. Due to the impurities of the mind, one goes to the forest and bears hardships. If your impurities are removed, here and now, as you listen, you will not have to go to the mountains and forest in search. Nirupana 21 Sunday, April 9th 1978. Consciousness is boundless. It cannot be foretold when realization will shine upon you. Someone gets it spontaneously. The other does not get it even with much effort. When a particular stage is reached, there comes about an appropriate change and a proper ground is prepared accordingly. Dattatreya a great sage was perfect Brahman. Where was the necessity of a guru for him? Yet it is said he approached twenty-four gurus. In order to eradicate egotistic consciousness and to pacify a particular quality, an appropriate guru was approached. Dattatreya was the knower of them. You feel that you are in that self 
feeling behaves according to the nature of time. The modification that flows from it is the mind. Fear is created through the effects of the mind. The totality has no fear. Earth is the quality of steady vital energy. The seed that sprouts from the earth does not die even when it is tortured, beaten, cooked, or roasted. Because of this, your growth is sustained and accelerated. The earth bears everything. That is why she is peaceful. The consciousness in the body is the pure consciousness I am. It has infinite names. Unknowingly, you have come to know you are, and that is God. The names of the deities pertain to that only. Before the knowingness was known, there was no experience of absence of peace. That is the stage of real peace. Until you know you are, your life is infinite. If you strive to know it, you will not be able to know it in order to overcome absence of peace. Consciousness has to be worshipped with non-dual devotion. The meaning of these words is not familiar to you. Can one take support of what is transient to know the truth? Your consciousness has a beginning, and therefore it will have an end. First, put aside your intellect, and then take the guru word and meditate on your subtle consciousness. Know that it is prior to the pondering. Make friends with it, and it will blossom within you. You will realize that it is your true nature. Believe that you are what you know before you know anything else. That is the Guru word. Consciousness has various names like God, Brahman, etc. It is known and experienced without making any effort. For its sake, ignore your mind and body. Word, mantra, means Brahman plus the guarantee that precedes it. The meaning of it all is, I am. Maintain that assurance with the initiation given by the Guru as proof. The word comes out of the sound, which comes out of the space. Consciousness is prior to space. It is called Brahman or God, the manifest reality. The mind knows nothing else except for the impressions gathered from childhood. That is the reason why good impressions are sought. That is the reason why the importance of good company is extolled. In the company of sages, our mind emulates them. Happiness and misery are there because they are believed to be so. Due to the nature of time, they are true for that time only. As time passes, they become meaningless. Do not ever forget that we are exactly what a guru has described. As you progress in watching your consciousness without the body by the same measure, you will experience your worthiness. After listening to this, compare it with your present state of being. As consciousness arises, it becomes the individual's world. To realize this consciousness is to attain peace. Can you stop sleep from turning into wakefulness and vice versa? Keep faith in the Guru's words as you live your daily life. Realize that when you act, you are not the doer. You only witness what happens. The sense of doership is because of body consciousness. Unless you realize yourself, your ego sense will not end. Even with proper initiation, if you do not follow it, it is of no use. 
without uttering a single word of the supreme or the mundane. That which is naturally there is your consciousness. Who knows the knowledge that is in the world? It is your consciousness, also called the self. It has no color, no form, and no design. It is pure knowingness. You behave according to what you have heard. But do you pay attention to that which is hearing now? That listener is your consciousness. One deals with the world from knowledge gained by the five senses. Does that knowledge have any color or form? Yet you superimpose wrong ideas on that and become unhappy. Your consciousness is of the nature of love and devotion. The proof of God's existence is your own consciousness. As you meditate on that knowledge, the five elements will come to serve you. You unnecessarily believe that you are weak and sinful. Drive out the negative by contemplating on your consciousness and recognize your true nature. The knowledge of the self will dawn on you at the appropriate time and your worthiness will be boundless. Then the mind, which wants something or wants to get rid of something, will disappear. The five elements will be at your service. Peace cannot be achieved unless pride of knowledge is given up. The sage is very peaceful. Nirupana 22 Thursday, April 13th, 1978 You have read and heard a lot. Now get to know the reader and the listener. The fact that you know you are is misery as well as joy. God is the source of joy, whereas the root of misery is maya. But at the root, it is only consciousness. Find out what you have with you that is your own. Meditate on and know that one who contemplates on God is himself God. Only the Satguru can tell you that it is so. Other teachers tell you to live as a servant of God. In the beginning, your mother teaches you to understand sound. Had she not done that, what would be your language? I am talking to you in that language, which was yours before sound was first introduced to you. Yet you have to understand the meaning in the language you have learned. All the religions of the world are mere concepts. Have you any other knowledge except what you have read or heard? The way of the self implies the way of the life force or consciousness, because we are consciousness. The manifested consciousness is not steady, whereas the unmanifested is the everlasting truth. When they prepare the horoscope of a child, the first consideration is the time of its birth. Then, who is born? Is it the child, or is it time? Worldly dealings are done according to the dictates of time. Time is duration. The sense of doership can be called the mind. In all these dealings there is the one who has no birth. With the Sadguru's grace, the illusion of birth will vanish forever. Beingness comes with a combination of body and prana. This experience has no form of its own. As a result, the mind identifies with the tangible body. Birth brings on time, yet for practicality it is said that the child is born. The witness who believes he is the body, is the victim of time. Does time have any form? This cannot be understood by performing rituals. Discrimination 
is necessary. All that is heard from childhood is taken for granted. Discriminate about all this thoroughly. Take hold of your true nature. Whatever is believed or retained will not remain with you. This will be understood when you know the self. Worldly dealings take place on the belief that what appears is true. Actually, it is a fraud. From deep sleep sprouts the feeling I am, then of the body and the world, followed by happiness and sorrow. If you do not realize this, you have to suffer. Your consciousness is luminous, formless, and spotless. The body is dirty, and that is why you are on the ground. If it were purified, you could fly in the air. Hatha yogis do that. Keep in mind the consciousness, that is, listening, and meditate on it. It has no attachment. There is no such thing as sin or virtue. You limit yourself by thinking you are the body and hence experience them. The one who is listening is the same as Brahman and the same is the Guru. Contemplate on this. Respect pure consciousness as the Guru and it will become your friend. Stop looking outward and behave as if you were the self. Worship the higher knowledge while saying, I am that. Do you stay with your consciousness even for a moment? One who wants to know this will not die without understanding it. There is nothing like, I will die with the body. Can the light die? How long is your consciousness going to live with you? It is seasonal. Contemplation of the Guru is contemplation of consciousness. Contemplation of consciousness by consciousness is the same as non-dual devotion. Nirupana 23 Sunday, April 16th, 1978 Occasion Birth Anniversary of Bausaheb Maharaj Maharaj's Guru's Guru Such is the glory of devotion to Bausaheb Maharaj that so many of you have gathered here. If you cannot appreciate the greatness of the Guru's teaching, all else is in vain. It is conveyed to you because of its total worthiness. Such a conviction will remove your ignorance. The firm belief in the Guru's word gives the knowledge of the Self. You are Parabrahman in whom the word mind dissolves and nothing remains. He is alone. He is neither the Guru, nor the disciple, nor God. The devotion of most people is for fulfilling their needs in the world. Such devotees cannot realize the self, at least before sleeping say, I am Paramatman. You are Paramatman. He has been called by many names. He has had many incarnations and will have many more in the future. You are the Atman of all these incarnations. The word Atman means I. Whatever happens in the world is because of me. I must be present prior to everything. Therefore you are the universal self. You are the Paramatman. He is neither bound nor liberated, but you have embraced body consciousness instead. You are attached to yourself. What you are hearing is familiar and simple. Have complete faith in the Guru word. With that, you will become Brahman. Paramatman does not even know that he is. 
That does not mean that he is asleep. When you say that you had a good sleep, who was the witness? Who knows I am? Then what is the meaning of the words he awoke? How is it possible? This is the result of Maya. Each one of us knows the answer to these questions, but we do not believe it to be so. Body consciousness is cuddling you. This is a journey within consciousness. You are the knower of it. You are prior to consciousness as a passive witness. The fact that you know you are is the main impediment. To remove the impediment first, believe it to be so. Your beingness or your sense of I am is the obstruction. It is God himself. This is the way you should worship. When he is pleased, he gives true knowledge. Know that you are Paramatman. Do not think that you are separate from him. That is only the concept of body consciousness. If my light is spotless, how can I be stained? The moment of death is the time of great happiness. For the body consciousness individual, it is death. If you die saying that you are pure light, you will be free. The moment of death that is so terrifying becomes a happy time with devotion to the Guru. Such is the greatness of the Guru's word. As an example, how happy one feels as he slips into sleep. The experience of happiness or misery comes because of our consciousness. It becomes happy by the grace of the Guru. The joy of the moment when the vital force leaves the body cannot be expressed in words. Worldly dealings are not true. So what is there to renounce? Carry on your worldly activities as it suits you. Remember the Guru word, not by the mind but by beingness. Once you are convinced of your true nature, you will not be concerned about slander. With your light, you observe all other lights in the world. How can that light be stained? Without words, realize that there is no other God, no other Brahman besides you. Remember this. Without words. That is the Guru word. One who belittles the light of the self will suffer great misery. Everything you recognize is based upon its colors and designs. The self cannot be recognized because it has no color or design. Nirupana 24 Thursday, April 20th, 1978 Is it a small thing that you know you are? Is it not that you alone know that? Then unite yourself with your consciousness. See what a miracle happens. Spirituality is simple. The rest is all entertainment. The word thought that rises in your mind will certainly have some effect on you. It is obvious that everything is untrue. So what is there to be negated? Even if there is nothing in the world, there still is delusion. It is very difficult to get an opportunity to hear this kind of knowledge. Liking it is even more important. One who is having his last birth only comes to me. What is not steady is called a phase. Samadhi is also a phase. That which is worshipped by all people and that which is worthy of worship is the same as yourself. It would be unfortunate if you did not accept this. Devotion means union. Be one with your knowledge of beingness. Then the work is done. All methods, philosophies and rituals are of no use. 
attainment of special powers through various yogic exercises is a hindrance. It creates false pride. As long as there is fear in the mind, there cannot be devotion. Jnana means realization. It is also devotion. Does one know what has brought this knowingness to consciousness? When consciousness goes, everything comes to an end. Krishna says, My devotion cannot be practiced through japa or austerities. It can only be practiced by observing the Guru word. That is the highest devotion. The Guru word is, You are not the body. You are the consciousness in the body. Who is caring for whom? Is it not consciousness caring for itself? Consciousness dissolves in the state of Paramatman. It is not affected by time. After realization, not a trace of ego will remain with you, e.g. I am like this, I am like that. Hold on to the Guru's word. I am self-luminous, pure consciousness. Then you can involve yourself in all worldly activities. While sleeping, remember the Guru word. In deep sleep, there is no body consciousness. Hence, the identification will be broken. Start again when you wake up. God is there where you are. Without the devotee, where is God? Remain with your own self. Do not get involved with others. Practice non-dual devotion. It is not time-bound. It is without ego. You will know how the five elements are created through consciousness, through you. Silently repeat your mantra. Meditation should be on one's own nature. Slowly the mind will become pure. The formless consciousness will be uncovered and your true nature will be understood. Till then, rituals may be practiced. You will come to know that you are spontaneously there. God is not greater than the Sadguru. When you realize your consciousness, you will realize the stage of Brahman. The mind always keeps comparing. Leave the greatness to others. Become so small that no one can see you. The conviction that ensues from the ever-growing devotion to Paramatman is I am formless, pure Brahman. What you are listening to is the description of pure knowledge. With devotion to the Guru, you will come to know that you are that. Be firm in your determination that you are formless, pure consciousness. Nirupana 25 Sunday, April 23rd, 1978 Throw out concepts like I have become very virtuous or I am a great sinner. What is the entity that senses this? Body consciousness will not lose its grasp on you with the thought that your well-being is the result of some spiritual activity. All you need do is keep observing yourself. Do not befriend anything that is visible to you. Do not be attracted towards worldly things. If you have to act at all, do only this. Please, your consciousness. It is very merciful. It will show you all that is directly. You will realize that the immense manifestation never existed. You are so microscopic that you will not be able to see yourself through your knowledge. Take the Guru's word as authority. You have no body. That which is prior to consciousness is fathomless peace. Surrender to it. 
Do not make everlasting bliss an object, a goal. You are beyond objects. The moment of death is the most blissful of all. There is nothing else to gain in this world except death. The irony is that where there is fear of death, at that very point is the ocean of bliss. Nirupana 26, Thursday, April 27th, 1978 The entire universe is sporting in a single cell of your subtle body, seat consciousness. That which is seen with your eyes closed is the dark blue absolute. It is the shadow of the subtle body. A person with body consciousness cannot understand this. First of all, you must acquire God consciousness through meditation. You must have the conviction that I am not an individual, but I am God. With transformation of the intellect, the ego disappears. Whatever is sought is always there at the source. Due to a misunderstanding, that is meditating. What is most worthy of worship? Is it not the knowledge you are? Your consciousness? Only Paramatman exists, nothing else. What is called birth is really the birth of the three gunas. The center of the gunas has no duality. A lamp requires oil. Similarly, consciousness presupposes the existence of the Paramatman. As long as the jiva has the experience of having done good or bad, there is no gaining the state of Paramatman. Your consciousness is the essence of sweetness. It is proof of the existence of Paramatman. What can you do on your own? Can you sleep? Can you wake up? Can you excrete or urinate? Then why is there pride of doership? The life force with its three gunas is itself the indicator of Paramatman. Because of Maya, each jiva thinks that it is responsible for its actions in the world. That is false. Childhood and youth have come and gone. What out of this remain with you as yourself? Will your own company last forever? The reason for this situation is the play of Maya. When the concept that you are your body is proved false through your own experience, you will know the nature of Paramatman. I do not talk to your body. You should not talk as the body either. Let the body be. Keep it well. Get to know in the present who will leave the body. Know that you are not the body but the knower of the body. Give full attention. Keep in mind that you are the light in the body, and then act. Consciousness is a lamp, the source of light. Do you see the sky because of this light, or are you seen because of the sky? Discriminate on this. Go into the source that is beyond space. Does your sight have any stain? Does space have any holes in it? Is not the sight of your eye itself the light of the self? And is this light male or female? As you use it with the concept of the body, it causes the fear of death. You hope for and expect so many things, but why not go for the source? Has anyone seen the light of the self dying? You must hear all this from the Satguru. Liberation comes through listening. It cannot be known through austerities or japa. When the words of the Satguru are understood and remembered, perfection follows without effort. 
Through the mantra given to you, you have been asked to open up the Godhood within you. You are the Self. There is no question of attaining it. The light of yourself is spotless. There is only the light. How can there be death? Who is listening now? The listener is your own self. When consciousness forgets itself, the dark blue absolute as seen with the eyes closed is similar to space. There is no break in it. It is all pervading. Follow devoutly what the Guru says and you will realize that you are consciousness. When the blue shade disappears, the void remains. It is an all-witnessing state of being. It is the fourth stage. I am all that I see. Your consciousness is the flavor of the Absolute. The Absolute contains an infinite number of universes. Many may have conceived Brahman intellectually. However, out of millions, a rare one follows the Satguru. There is no greater fortune than having self-knowledge. You have committed a great sin by calling yourself the body. Then the Absolute becomes the great death for you in your last moment. Who else is there except for him at the time of death? Make your own decision. Choose for yourself. Do not depend upon other people. You must worship this knowledge which is listening to the word of the Guru. You will see countless universes playing within your consciousness. There is no other deity besides self-knowledge. There is no greater misfortune if it is not realized. Self-knowledge itself is the Paramatman stage, the home of liberation. If someone writes down my words and keeps ruminating on them, he will get the state of Paramatman effortlessly.